hello and welcome to this video in this video I will show you how to make a simple bracelet using curry shells um, and uh, you will also use some wooden beads like this some string and as tools I will use a pair of scissors so as you can see the only tools that I will use in order to make this bracelet will be the pair of scissors Otherwise, I will use no accessories, no um, findings, no metal uh, items, just string and the beads, the wooden beads and the shells. So, I will take the string and I will find the middle of the string, like this. this way and here at the middle point I will take one of those wooden beads and put the bead on this string I will make a knot an overhand knot, a simple overhand knot here at the end of this cord this way like this and now I will measure my wrist and establish how long this cord should be so I have decided that the cord should be about this long and this is why I will make an overhand knot at this point here this way and now I will start adding the cowrie shells in order to create the bracelet this way I will put the first shell now let's see from a closer distance this is the first um, shell that I will add so I'll put the shell in between those two strings like this and I will take the string from below and put it through the shell like this and I will take the string from above and also put it through the shell this way like this so as you can see the string that came from below came out here on the upper side of the shell and the string that came from the upper side was taken out here on the lower part of the shell and in the middle the two strings cross each other and now I will make a knot so I will take this string and I will put it over the second string and take the string this way underneath the other string and I have created this loop and on this side of the loop I will put the I'll take the string out in order to create this knot here so I'll put this knot as close as possible to the shell so that the shell is fixed between these two knots like this now let's take the second shell and now I will do the same so I'll put the shell in between those two strings and I will take the string from below and take it out through the shell like this and take the string from above and put it through the shell and take it out on the lower part like this So again I have the two strings crossed in the middle of the shell and I make again a knot. So I have this string here that I let, I put it on the table straight like this and the second string, this one, will be put 
over the first string and now I will take it underneath these two strings like this in order to create this loop this way and now that I have created this loop I will take the string out through the loop like this and I will tighten this knot so that the shell does not move this way so I already have two shells like this and I will continue adding the next shells by using the same technique And now this is the last bead so let's see from a closer distance again I put one string on top and one string on the lower side of the shell and now I take the uh, string from the bottom of the shell and put it through the shell and take it out on top of the shell and I will take the string from above the shell and take it out through the bottom of the shell and now here instead of making um, the smaller knot I will make a simple overhand knot because this is the end of the bracelet I will make sure that the shell is fixed between these two knots. And now I will measure these two ends of the bracelet so that they are equal. And I will take the second wooden bead and put it on this second string of the bracelet. This way. So again I will measure the length of this bracelet and make the knot, the simple overhand knot, at the end of the bracelet here. So that the two ends are equal. Like, like this. So now I made sure that the two ends of the bracelet are equal and now I can simply cut the end of the cord here like this 
and now as you can see the bracelet is almost finished so as you can see the shells go around the wrist and I have these two strings here now before we continue I will just measure the length of the bracelet so as you can see for a woman's wrist a bracelet is around six inches long or 16 centimeters 15 to 16 almost 16 centimeters and in order to make a bracelet for men you can add one more inch or one inch and a half so you can make it 18 19 or 20 centimeters long depending on the wrist um, of a man and um, the entire bracelet is about 13 inches long that is 33 centimeters long because we also need this bit of a string in order to be able to take the bracelet out from our wrist and now let's finish the bracelet by creating a sliding knot so I will take a bit of cord like this and put it underneath so let's put it this way so I'll put these two ends of the cord like this I'll superpose them and I will take this bit of a cord and find the middle of the cord like this so as you can see I found the middle of the cord and I will make a simple overhand knot here on the cord like this so I made the first knot and now let's see from a closer distance how I will make the uh, knot the sliding knot so I will make a loop here like this and I will take the other cord and put it through this loop that I have created here and I'll put this other string here and I've created the first loop the first knot on the sliding knot now I make another loop like this I take this second string I put it over the first string and take it out underneath the two strings and take it out through this loop and I made the second knot of the sliding knot and again I will do the loop on this side take the second string put it over the first string like this and underneath the two strings and take it out on this side again I make the knot on this side like this take this other string put it over the first string take it underneath these strings and take it out through the loop here again I make the knot on this side take the string over the first string like this and take it out underneath the two strings and out through the loop and I'll make a few more knots this way
and now that I have made these knots here I will simply cut it and now that I have finished the sliding knot I'll just take the scissors and cut the ends of the cord this way and now that I have cut the ends of the cord the bracelet is finished so as you can see I have used seven uh, shells and I was looking for shells that should look um, as similar as possible as size I used the string the black cord and some wooden beads so as you can see the only tool I needed for this type of bracelet was the pair of scissors so let's see what it looks like if I put it on my arm So this is what the bracelet looks like on the arm. So this is what the finished bracelet looks like and as you can see it is not very difficult to make such a bracelet by using these shells and a bit of string. I will show you how to create an upper arm bracelet or an armband uh, using some cowrie shells. Um, I will also use some cord. And um, as you can see here, I have several bits of cord. Um, I have um, a cord that is about 70 centimeters long and another uh, longer cord which has about 140 centimeters and I will use these cords in order to create the braiding of the um, biceps bracelet. At the moment I will um, start creating the uh, armband using this cord. So at the beginning of this cord I will take the cords that I have and I will make a knot like this. And I will grab this end of the cord with a clamp like this and now I have these three cords which are equal uh, as length and I will start creating the uh, braiding for our armband so I will start braiding this cord Like this so as you can see it's a simple braiding and I will continue braiding until the point where I will apply the first um, cowrie shell so 
So now I will use this as a clamp and I will grab two of the cords in order to put them away so that I can work with the cord that I need in order to create the jewelry item that I want. I will attach the first cowrie shell. So I have this cord here. I will put the cord through the shell and I will make a knot so that the cowrie shell will uh, be attached to our braiding. So I will take this cord and put it over the other cord like this in order to form a loop here. So as you can see here I have a loop. I will take the cord and put it through this loop to make the knot. like this and I have attached the first cord, the first cowrie shell to our braided cord and now let's continue braiding And now I will stop again. I will grab the two cords and take another cowrie shell. I will take the second cowrie shell and take the cord, put it through the shell like this and create a loop this way. I'll put the cord through the loop and tighten this knot. And as you can see, I have now added the second cowrie shell. I'll just remove this clamp and continue braiding as I have braided so far. So I will braid a similar length of cord. So as you can see I'm trying to uh, braid the cords um, so that um, the braiding looks even. And again, I will grab the two cords
like this. And I will take an other bead and I will put the cord through the bead, create the loop like this. tighten the knot this way like this and let's continue braiding and adding the, the rest of the, our cowrie shells so I will continue braiding using the same steps until I have added all the cowrie shells Now I have uh, finished making the um, biceps bracelet. I will take the cords and put the cords through this bead over here. So I put the cords, the braid, the cords that I was braiding through this bead here. And now I will be making a knot. like this so that the bead stops in this knot and now I will tighten both knots so that they do not open so as you can see I have this cord here that has to be removed so I will cut it and by means of a lighter I will melt the end of the cord so that it sticks to the knot and doesn't open and here I have these cord ends that I will cut like this and I will put away these cords and now I will close the upper arm bracelet like this so this is the finished upper arm bracelet as you can see it is made of a braided cord and it uses these cowrie shells as ornaments and for uh, the closure I have used a simple wooden bead And as um, tools, I needed just a few tools. I needed a lighter, I needed a pair of scissors and a clamp to grab the cord in order to be able to braid it. So this is the finished upper arm bracelet. will show you how to make an anglet using a cowrie shell and some cord. Um, I will use two longer pieces of cord 
So these pieces of cord will be about 25 centimeters long, 20 or 25 centimeters long. And then I will use another shorter piece of cord of about 15 to 20 centimeters long in order to make the sliding knot. Uh, as tools I will use a pair of scissors. And now let's begin making the uh, anklet. I will put the shorter cord away and I will take the... So our friend is again talking. I don't know exactly what he's saying. Rudolf? What are you doing there, Rudolf? <laughs> Rudolf, what are you doing there? <laughs> Do you want to let me make the anklet? So, our kitten has studied what we were doing here and now that he knows what I was doing he left uh, well as people say curiosity killed the cat <laughs> so i hope that my kitten will not be so curious and that he will always be safe so as usual he is curious and he wants to know what i am doing Um, now let's uh, make the. Let's begin making the anklet. Um, in order to start making the anklet, I will take the cord and put it through the cowrie shell. Like this. And now that I have put the cord through the shell, I will make a knot. I will take one of the cords, put it over the other cord, like this, and create a loop. I will make the loop smaller, like this, and I will take the cord and put it through this loop like this. And I will tighten the loop. And this way I have created the first knot. Now I will do the same on this other side. I will put the cord through the shell like this and I will take one of the cords and put it over the other cord like this to create a loop like this and I will put the cord through the loop to create the knot. Like this. So as you can see, I now have 
a knot on each side of the shell so that the shell doesn't move on these cords. Now I have made a knot at both ends of the anklet and I will also make a knot here at the end of the cord one knot here and another knot at the other end of the cord like this. So I have two knots on both ends of the cowrie shell and I have a knot at the end of the cord here. And now let's close the anklet. I will superpose these two cords and I will take the third cord that I prepared for the sliding knot. In order to make the sliding knot, I will superpose these two ends of the cord and I'll find the middle of the cord. I will put this cord under the two cords like this and I will make a knot here like this. So I made a simple overhand knot. Let's see from a closer distance and now I will start making the sliding knot. I will make a loop first of all on the right side then after I make the first knot I will make the second loop on the left side then I make another knot then I again make a loop on the right side and then on the left side and I will continue making knots until there is no more cord. So let's see how I do that. So I make a loop like this. I put the cord from the right side over the two cords. Then I take the uh, cord on the left side, put it over the cord that came from the right side and under the two cords here like this. So under these two cords here. And now I will take the cord and put it from below and take it out like this through the loop that I created. And I make the first knot like this. So as you can see we have made the first knot of the sliding knot. Now, as I've told you before, I will make another loop but on the left side. Then I take the cord from the right side, put it over this cord, put it under the two cords like this and then take it out through this loop, this way, like this. And I have created the second knot of the sliding knot. So I have two knots here. And let's continue. I will make another knot on the right side again. I take the cord from the left side, put it over this cord and take it under the two cords to the right side and now I will take it out through this loop here and I made a third knot
again I make a loop on the left side put the cord over this other cord that I brought from the left side under the two cords like this and then I will take it out through this loop here and I have the fourth knot now again I make a loop on this side and I take this other cord like this through the loop and make the knot and I will continue making these knots until there is no more cord here and now that I can no longer make knots because the cord is too short I will just cut the cord like this and to prevent these knots from opening I will just take some glue and apply it on these two ends like this And now I have now I have finished the anklet the cowrie shell surf anklet and as you can see the only tool that I needed for this anklet was a pair of scissors and um, to make the anklet I only needed the shell and a bit of cord. I will show you how to create an anklet using a cowrie shell and some cord. As you can see I have a shorter bit of cord which I will use for the sliding knot. This one is about 20, 15 to 20 centimeters long and I have another two cords that are a bit longer and they are for the anklet itself and these two cords are about 25 centimeters long um, in order to make this uh, surf anklet um, I will take these two cords first of all I will superpose the cords and make a knot at the end of these cords like this. So I have made a knot here and now I will mark the middle of the uh, anklet and I will make another knot at about this distance here. like this. So I have made two knots, one at the end and one about in about the middle of the cord. And now I will put the shell in between these two cords like this. Let's see from a closer distance. So exactly next to this knot, to prevent the shell from moving left to right, I put the shell and as you can see one of the cords is below the shell on this side of the shell and the other cord is in the ridge of this shell on the other opposite side of the shell. And now I will make these two cords cross inside of this shell so that the shell does not fall off. So I'm going to take one of the cords and put the cord 
through the shell like this. So the shell that was on the cord here, above the cord, will go through the shell and come out on the other side, through this hole. And I have the other cord that was on the lower part of the shell here. And I will put this cord that was on this side here through the shell and make it come out on the upper side of the shell. So let's put the cord like this and take it out on the upper side of the shell. And now what do we have here? As you can see the two shells have crossed here inside of the shell. And now let's pull on the two threads. As you can see the two cords are crossing inside here, inside the shell, so that the shell doesn't fall out. And to prevent the shell from sliding in this direction here, because it could move like this, you see, and to make it, to stop it from moving in this direction, we shall make another knot here. So in order to make a knot, I will take one of the cords put it over the other cord and take it out here, on this side here. And now I will put the cord through the loop that I have created and I am creating the sliding, the knot that I wanted to create. like this. And now as you can see I have created a knot on this side and I've also made a knot on this other side. So our shell is flanked by two knots. This way it cannot move left and right on the cord. And now after I have created one knot here at the end, two knots to flank the shell, I will also make a knot, a fourth knot, here at the end of our cord. like this. So we have a knot at both cord ends and now let's create the sliding knot so that we can put the anklet on the ankle and take it off. So I will put the cords like this one over the other as you can see here and I will take the shorter bit of cord that I was planning to use for the sliding knot. I fold it like this and I find the middle of the cord. And like this I have put the cord with the middle point under these two cords and I will make a simple overhand knot. So I cross the cords like this, take the cord out through here and make the first knot like this. And now I will create loops. I will create loops once on the right side, then on the left side, then on the right side, then on the left side and with by means of these loops I will create the knots of our sliding knot. So let's see how we make this sliding knot. I create the first loop on the right side. The thread on the, the cord on the left side will be put over the cord that came from the right side and underneath these two cords, like this. And now I will take the cord out through this loop here. And 
and I will close the knot like this. Now I will make a loop on this other side, put the cord over this cord, take it under the two cords and out through the loop like this and I make the second knot. So as you can see I already made two knots. Again I make a loop on the right side Put the cord from the left side over the first cord and take it out underneath these two cords like this and take it out through the loop. And again I will make a loop on the left side, bring the cord from the right side over the first cord under the two cords here like this and take it out through this loop and now I will tighten the knot and I have made another knot like this and I will continue making knots until there is no more cord here like this and these two cords are now too short to uh, be able to make a new knot so I will cut the cord like this and to prevent it from um, opening to prevent the knot from opening I will simply take some glue and stick the two knots here and now Now as you can see our anklet is ready. So as you can see here we only needed one shell and some cord. And to make the anklet I crossed the two cords inside of the shell so that it doesn't fall out and I made a knot at each end of the shell so that the shell doesn't move uh, to the left or to the right on our cord. At the ends of our uh, anklet I made a knot and I also created a sliding knot so that we can close and open our anklet. And the only tool that we needed to make this uh, jewelry item was a pair of scissors. So if you are a beginner and you want to uh, learn how to make handmade jewelry, you can begin with a simple um, anklet like this, where you only need a pair of scissors. I will show you how to make a necklace for men, a surf necklace, using wooden beads. I will use uh, beads that are in the natural color of wood and black beads and I will also need uh, certain tools. I will use a big uh, beading needle, this needle, a pair of uh, pliers, a lighter, a pair of scissors, and uh, a measuring tape to measure the length of the necklace and I will also use this ring in order to open and close the jump rings first of all in order to make the necklace 
I will need some thread. I will use this nylon thread, this black nylon thread. And uh, in order to create a necklace for men, a surf necklace, I will measure 40 centimeters, that is 16 inches. Um, of thread. So the length of the thread should be 16 inches, about 16 inches or 40 centimeters. So this long. I will also need some findings. I will need a clasp a lobster claw clasp to open and to close the necklace. I will also need those jump rings that I've told you about a bit earlier. And for the end of the thread I will use these metal beads. And I will also use a shell, as you can see this one is painted, and a jump ring to decorate the necklace. So let's begin. I will put the beads away and most of the tools. And um, I also use this magnetic sheet in order to put the small metal uh, items on this magnetic sheet so that they do not roll off the table. So first of all, I will begin by taking the thread that I have already measured to be 16 inches or 40 centimeters. You can make the thread longer or shorter. Um, Depending on the diameter of your neck, you can simply put the thread around your neck and see how long you would like the thread to be and then you will add a few centimeters at the uh, end of the thread so that you can make the knot and uh, add the um, lobster claw clasp. So let's begin by making one or two knots at the end of the thread. so that we can put the bead ends. Now I have made a few knots at the end of the thread and in order to get rid of this end, which does not look so good, I will simply take the lighter and burn this end, like this. Now, the next step is to take the needle, the big eye beading needle, and I will take one of these crimps, metal crimps, and I will put the crimp, this little crimp, I'll put it on the thread. So I will take the needle and put the thread through the needle like this. Let's see a bit from a distance. So I put the thread through the needle like this and now I will take the crimp and put the crimp 
on the needle like this and now I will move the crimp until it reaches the end of the thread like this and now let's see from a closer distance so the crimp is at the end of the thread and I will take the pliers the chain nose pliers and press on the crimp like this this way and now I will add one of those bead ends so these are the bead ends and as you can see they have a hole here and I will put the needle with the thread through the hole of the bead end and now I will move the bead end this way like this and now as you can see the crimp together with the knot at the end are inside of this bead end, metal bead end. I will take the pliers and press on these two sides of the bead end like this and now I have closed this bead end. this way I have closed this bead end like this and now I will take one of those jump rings and grab the jump ring with the pliers and I will also take the jump ring opener in order to open the jump ring like this so as you can see I have opened the jump ring and I will put the jump ring through the bead end like this and the next step is to attach the lobster claw clasp so I will take the lobster claw clasp and put it on this jump ring like this So as you can see the bead end is connected to the drum ring and the jump ring is connected to the uh, lobster claw clasp. And now I will close this jump ring using the pliers, the chain nose pliers and the jump ring opener. And now as you can see I have attached the lobster claw clasp to the jump ring and the jump ring to the bead end and here begins the thread on which I will put the beads and now I will remove the tools that I don't need for the moment and I will start adding the beads so as I said I will add white and black beads like this and I will start putting the beads on the thread so I'll put a few white beads so they have the natural uh, color of the wood like this and then I'll put a black one then I'll continue by putting white beads a black bead
this way. So this is what the necklace will look like. A few white beads, then some black beads and again a few white beads. And I will continue uh, adding the beads until I um, get to the middle of the necklace. Now he also wants to know what what I'm doing here, kitty? Not here, kitty. You're not allowed. And now that I have reached the middle of the string, I will add a few more white beads. And then I will add two black beads to mark the center of the string. So first of all I will put these beads and now before I continue adding the uh, second bead I will create the pendant. So I will need a larger jumbling like this and I will use this shell as a pendant. As you can see it is a normal shell which is painted. So I will take the jumbling like this. and grab it with the pliers like this and I will open the jump ring with the jump ring opener like this I'll put the jump ring through the shell pendant and I will close the jump ring using the jump ring opener and the pliers like this and now I will add this I will add this pendant to my string so I will put the pendant on the string that I have created like this and I will continue with the second black bead I will put the second black bead that marks the center of the necklace like this and I will continue by adding the beads in the same order until both sides of the necklace are equal And uh, these are the last beads. And now the necklace is symmetrical. Like this. And now I will add in order to close the necklace I will add the findings at the end of the necklace
first of all I will add the bead end like this this way and I will also add a crimp So I'll put the crimp on the needle, like this, and put it inside of this bead end. So I will open the bead end. I will take the needle out and put it away. And now I will take the pliers and press. So with the pliers I will press on the crimp like this. And I will also make a knot at the end of the crimp. So that the crimp does not come out and cut the thread and with the lighter I will burn the end of the thread like this and now I will close the bead end like this and I'll make sure that it is perfectly closed by using the pliers. So with the pliers I will press the two ends of the bead end like this. And now I have this, let's see from a closer distance, I have this bead end and I will add a jump ring to the bead end. I will grab the jump ring with the pliers and with the jump ring opener. I will open the jump ring, put the jump ring through the bead end and I will close it. Now I have closed the jump ring and now let's see if the lobster claw clasp closes the necklace. So this way. Now the necklace is finished and one more aspect that I want to add uh, is that whenever you put the bead at the end of the string and you um, make the knot at the end of the string you should take care that you leave some space as you can see here between the beads 
so the neck necklace should not be very tight like this so the um, beads should not press over one another because that would give a more rigid aspect to the necklace like this if you leave just a millimeter of string here before you put the bead end as you can see here there is a millimeter of thread uh, left um, you give the possibility to the beads to move not to be so fixed on the thread and this makes the necklace look more flexible so as you can see uh, this is the finished surf necklace as I have told you the length of the necklace should be around 16 inches or 40 centimeters So as you can see it's not very difficult to make a surf necklace like this. You need some tools and a few findings, the thread and the beads. I will show you how to make a necklace using cowrie shells. Um, it will be a very um, simple necklace. I will use no metal findings. Uh, I will only use the cowrie shells, some wooden beads and the string, black string. I will superpose the two ends of the string like this and I will find the middle of the string like this and here I will make a knot in order to create a loop like this so I made a simple overhand knot as you can see and I have created this loop over here And now let's start adding the shells. So I have chosen some shells that should be a relatively equal as size. And I will take the first shell and let's see from a closer distance how I will put the shells on this necklace so as you can see I have a string on this side and a string on this side I will take the string from above and put it like this through the shell and take it out on the lower side here and I will take the string from below and take it out through here on the upper side so as you can see the two strings are crossing like this inside of the shell as you can see there is a cross here this way and now here I will make another simple overhand knot or as an alternative I can make another type of knot so either I can make the simple knot like this or if I can if I want I can make a knot that is a bit more aesthetic I will take the string from this side put it over the other string like this 
then I will take it underneath the two strings and take it out through this loop here. So I have this loop like this. And I have made this knot over here this way. Now I will take the next shell and I put the strings the same way. One on top of the shell and the other one on the bottom of the shell. So I will take the string on top of the shell and put it through the shell like this and take it out through the bottom of the shell and the lower string will be put through the shell like this and taken out on top of the shell like this And again, I will make the same type of knot. I will take this string and put it over the other string like this. Then I will take it underneath the two strings like this. And now I will take it out through this loop here. Like this. This way. So I have already added two shells to this string, to this necklace. So I will continue adding shells using the same pattern.
and now I will add the last bead like this. So I have crossed the two strings. Now I will make the knot. I will bring one string over the other like this. and I will take it out through this loop here This was the last knot and now I will make a larger knot to prevent this knot from slipping. An overhand knot. like this. I will cut these two cords at this distance and I will add the beads. I'll put one of the beads on one string like this and I will make a knot at the end of the string a simple overhand knot this way so I have one bead at this end and I will put the second bead on the second string like this and again I will make an overhand knot this way. So I have made these two strings and now the necklace is ready. So if I want to close the necklace I just put one of those beads through the loop here and I can make a simple knot like this. Let's see from a closer distance. So I have this loop here. And I take one bead through the loop. This way. And then I simply make a knot with the other like this and this is how I close this simple shell necklace so this is what the 
cowrie shell necklace looks like. As you can see, this is a very simple necklace. So I use no uh, metal items, no metal uh, findings. Um, and in uh, uh, another video, I will show you how to use metal findings in order and also beads. I will use beads that I will put in between those shells um, to make the necklace look more beautiful. And I will also use here at the end uh, metal findings. Of course, if I want to make a necklace with metal findings, I will need other tools uh, besides the scissors. So for this necklace I only needed the scissors. This was the only tool that I needed to make such a simple necklace. So uh, let's see now uh, this necklace has used 11 um, shells length of the necklace so that it should go around the neck should be at least 35 centimeters or 14 inches so if the necklace is around 14 13 or 14 inches it will go around the neck uh, around the female neck for a um, uh, necklace for men, uh, you should uh, add a few more inches. So 14 inches and around 35-36 centimeters is the length needed for a shell necklace like this. So this is the finished necklace. I will show you uh, how to make a very simple uh, necklace using a cowrie shell pendant. As you can see this uh, shell is also painted. Um, a few beads. I've chosen some wooden beads and a piece of uh, leather cord. The leather cord has to be about one uh, meter long for a normal uh, necklace with sliding knot. So this will be a necklace with um, two sliding knots on each side. So you will be able to adjust the length of the necklace. Um, as uh, I have told you, this is a very simple uh, necklace, it's easy to make necklace, because you do not need findings and you also do not need any tools. All you need is the leather cord, uh, the shell, the pendant, the shell pendant, and the beads. Regarding the beads, one aspect to take into consideration is that you should look for beads that have an orifice large enough so that the cord will go through the bead. Like this. So uh, always, always when you use leather cord you must take into consideration that if you use beads they have to be large enough so that the cord goes through those beads. Um, so you will see that this is a necklace that can be easily made by a beginner who has never made a necklace before or handmade jewelry before. Not only because you do not need any tools, but also because the technique itself is not very difficult to learn. So in order to begin the necklace, we shall first put the pendant, the shell pendant, 
at the center of the necklace. So we must find the uh, necklace center. So I will take the two cords and superpose them like this to see where the necklace middle is, the center of the necklace is. So this is the center of the necklace. And now I have superposed these two um, parts of the cord. Now let's see from a closer distance. I will take the shell. Usually when you work with cowrie shells you must uh, be attentive that if you uh, use leather cord, the leather cord is a bit wider here. This has for example one millimeter width. And um, you must take into consideration that if you use a shell, this space here must be large enough so that the leather can go through the shell. Now let's put the leather through the shell like this, this way, and I will take the loop out on this other side of the pendant, this way, and I will take the other end of the cord so now I have the loop here and I will take the other end of the uh, cord the ends of the cord and put them through the loop and now I will close this knot so I have now attached the pendant at the middle of the necklace and now I have these two cords on the left and on the right and I have the shell in the middle of the necklace. The next step is to attach the beads. So uh, I will take the bead and put the leather cord through the bead like this. So this is one bead and this is the other bead. Like this. So I have attached the two beads and now I will, so the two beads in the color of wood have been attached, now I will attach the black beads symmetrically on each side of the pendant. like this and now the center of the necklace is ready so as you can see if I have chosen a green leather cord um, I have also tried to match it with the pendant to find a pendant that is the same color as the leather um, and uh, regarding the beads, I did not choose uh, colorful beads. I chose um, beads in neutral color and for this necklace I chose black beads here and here because the pendant does have black spots and I also chose some beads in the natural color of wood. Usually if you are unsure about how to combine the colors, you should um, think about neutral colors because they uh, not only match each other within the jewelry item, but you can also combine them very easily with uh, any clothing uh, uh, item because uh, generally the neutral colors uh, match uh, any other colors that you might use on your clothing. So the center of the necklace is ready and now let's make the sliding knots. 
the making of sliding knots is very easy. I will explain to you how to create the sliding knots. So I have these two uh, uh, cords, pieces of cord, and I will take one of them and put it over the other. And now I will grab the two pieces of cord and I will start turning one of the cords around the other. So I will take it once like this over the cord and take it out on the other side and make one loop and another loop. So as you can see these two loops, let's see from a closer distance. So as you can see these two, two loops must not be very tight because we shall have to put the end of the cord through the loops. So I took the end of the cord out on this side and now I'll put this end of the cord through these two loops like this so I put the end of the cord through the two loops so I have the end of the cord here and I have this loop here now I will take this end of the cord and put it through this loop here like this this way and I have made one of the sliding knots and now I will make the sliding knot on the other side I will turn the necklace on this other side and I will superpose the two cords like this I will grab the cord here the two cords I will put the cord over the first cord and then turn it around the other cord twice I will take the cord out on this side then put it through the loop once then the second time this way and then I will take it out through this loop here like this and now I have also made the second sliding knot and now let's see what the finished necklace looks like so we have these two sliding knots here on both sides and the pendant the shell pendant and the beads in the middle so I will show you how to make a pair of earrings, of simple earrings, using some painted cowrie shells. As you can see they are broken on this side so that, that they can be used as beads. Um, I will also use a pair of pliers, the chain nose pliers, which have the top pointed so that they can grab small parts small um, findings like this. Um, another tool that I'm going to use is the jump ring opener and I will also need some findings, the fish hook ear wires that we use to hang the earrings in the ears and the jump rings. Now let's take one of those beads and make the first earring. So I will take the bead and I will take one jump ring and open the jump ring with the jump ring opener and the pliers. I will put the bead on this jump ring and I will also put the fish hook ear wire on the jump ring. 
I'll grab the jump ring with the pliers and with the jump ring opener I will op uh, close the jump ring and I have created the first earring. So this is a very colorful earring so it can be worn for example at the beach. And now let's do the same with the second earring. I will grab the pliers and I'll grab the jump ring and with the jump ring opener I'll open the jump ring. I'll put the um, um, shell on the jump ring and now I will put the fish hook ear wire on the jump ring but before I put the fish hook ear wire I will see how I put the other fish hook ear wire so if this fish hook ear wire has the top oriented in this direction the second fish hook ear wire should have the top here oriented in the opposite direction so that when I put the earrings on my ears they both face with the painted side towards the front for example if I put the ear wire in the same direction this way let's see what will happen I will put the second earring on my ear and the earring will show the back of the shell not the front of the shell this is why I will put the fish hook ear wire in this direction and then they will both show the colorful part so I will grab the jump ring with the pliers and the jump ring opener and close the jump ring and now I have also made the second earring like this we have both earrings ready now so as you can see for a pair of earrings like this we only need two simple tools and two findings and uh, we have made a pair of colorful earrings that you can wear for example at the beach pair of earrings uh, using cowrie shells as you can see I have chosen cowrie shells that are painted also beside the white ones and I will show you how to make a pair of earrings for which you only need two tools and also two findings before we begin let's talk about the tools and the findings so for this pair of earrings we shall use these two tools and let's talk about each one of them this ring is called the jump ring opener and as the name suggests it is used for opening and closing the jump rings so these are the jump rings um, the second tool that we shall need for this type of uh, earrings uh, are these uh, pliers which are called the chain nose pliers as you can see they are pointed here they are very narrow so that with this tip of the pliers we can grab the small items um, they are used for also for bending a wire uh, they have multiple utilities but in this case we shall also, uh, also use them for only one purpose for opening and closing the jump rings together with the jump ring open um, as you can see um, characteristic of these pliers is the fact that they have no teeth on this surface you can see the surface is very flat the reason for not having teeth is the fact that this way the 
um, findings will not be scratched or will be scratched less. Um, the disadvantage of not having teeth is the fact that um, they um, do not grip so uh, well the findings. And uh, let's talk about the findings now. I've uh, shown you the jump rings, so these are the jump rings. And um, <clears throat> the jump rings are a very a common type of uh, a finding that is used for very many um, jewelry items. They are used for necklaces, for bracelets, for anklets, for very very many types of uh, jewelry items. So generally when you um, make handmade jewelry you should think about having uh, jump rings because a lot of jump rings because you will need them for most of your jewelry items. Um, as you can see, for these earrings I have chosen some large uh, jump rings because of the shape of the uh, cowrie shells. As you can see, these cowrie shells have, do not have an orifice here so that you could um, attach a smaller jump ring. They are broken here, so this distance is pretty large, so we shall need a larger jump ring for them. And the second finding that we shall need um, is this item. This is called a French ear wire or a fish hook ear wire and it is used for hanging the earring on your ear, on the earlobe. So we shall only need these two findings for our earrings. And now that I have talked to you about what we need as tools and findings in order to make the earrings, let's start making the earrings. So let's begin by taking the beads putting them in order like this and let's start attaching the beads to one another I'll take a jump ring I grab it with the pliers and using the jump ring opener I will open the jump ring as you can see I have opened the jump ring uh, very much because the space of the jump ring, this space, should allow this large bit of shell to go through the jump ring, like this. So I have attached the first bead and now I will attach the second bead, like this. So I have attached the two beads and now we are going to close the jump ring. Again, I grab the jump ring with my pliers and with the jump ring opener I will close it. This way. this. So the first two beads have been attached. Now let's attach the next bead, the next shell. I will take the second jump ring open it like this and I put it through the first bead and also through the last bead, the second bead, and through the third bead, the last bead. And again, I grab it with the pliers, like this, and close it with the jump ring opener.
like this. And now that I have attached the beads to one another, let's attach the last item, the finding. The fish hook ear wire that, as I've told you, is used in order to hang the earring on the earlobe. I will again use a jump ring to attach the to attach the fish hook ear wire to the rest of the earring. I'll grab the jump ring with the pliers, open the jump ring. Put the jump ring through the bead and attach the fish hook ear wire. Um, I will mention an important aspect that you should take into consideration. So, this is the position of the beads, and the front of the beads faces us, right? So. We shall take into consideration that when we make our earrings, we should think about what direction those beads will face. If we want the beads to face this direction, then we must calculate how they will look on the uh, ear. So we must calculate uh, what the face will look like. So let's say that this is the face. This is one ear and This is the other ear. So we have made the first earring and if we attach it to the ear we have to put this fish hook ear wire in this position, in this direction, so that it faces the ear this way. If we put it this way um, then our earring will uh, face this direction. If we put it this way the earring, if we put it into the ear, will be looking like this, right? Because we take it, we, let's see, we put the earring like this, right? And if you want to hang it in this ear, we'll do this. So what will happen? The earring will face the opposite direction, so we'll see the back of the earring. So be very careful that you calculate how the earring should look in the end uh, and in what direction the front of the earring should uh, go and according to that you will attach the fish hook ear wire. So I put the fish hook ear wire this way so that I can hang it in the ear like this. I will put the fish hook ear wire like this and again I will close the jump ring with the jump ring opener and our first earring is ready. So this is our first earring. And on the background is our <laughs> little friend who wants something. I think I'll go to see what the cat wants. Right kitty? Because you don't let us finish the earrings. So anyway, this is the first earring. As you can see, I have finished the first earring. And then, let's make the second earring. And here we have our little friend who wants attention because he's getting bored alone.
and now that our little mascot has decided to leave us alone let's continue to make the the other earring but quickly because uh, the cat is getting bored when he is alone and uh, he might decide to bother us again uh, now let's make the second earring and we shall use the same steps that we used for the first earring so I'll take the jump ring open it with the jump ring opener and the pliers I'll open the jump ring a bit more so that the bead can go through the jump ring and I attach the two uh, beads at the bottom of the uh, earring and now I close them And now let's take the second earring the second uh, jump ring sorry so I have the uh, second jump ring I've opened it I put the last bead I close the jump ring like this and I have attached the last earring the last uh, bead to the earring and now let's also attach the uh, fish hook ear wire again I open the jump ring with the jump ring opener like this I put the Uh, jump ring through the bead and as I have told you now if this earring faced the um, fish hook ear wire faced the tip of the fish hook ear wire faced this direction I will have to put this fish hook ear wire in this direction why? because if we have the face here one of the jump rings, one of the uh, earrings will face this direction and the other one must look like this but it also has to show the front of the beads therefore this fish hook ear wire will go in the opposite direction so if you are not attentive at this detail you will um, finish the earrings and you will notice that one of the earrings uh, is reversed so you will have to open the jump ring and make the fishhook ear wire open the uh, face the other direction so that the earrings look normal so these are the two earrings um, as you can see they are dangle earrings and um, because I have used uh, these colors you can match them with something that with a, a clothing that has green or red and you can wear them for example at the beach uh, generally the dangle earrings uh, have an elegant look and they also because they are long they also make your neck look longer 
So as you can see, it is not difficult to make a pair of uh, earrings like these. The technique for making these earrings is relatively simple because we only need two tools and two types of um, findings, the jump rings and the fish hook ear wires to hang the earrings on the ear. I will show you how to create a pair of earrings. a pair of animal print earrings using some cowrie shells. As you can see, these cowrie shells have been printed with animal print. And uh, <clears throat> like all cowrie shells, if we want to turn them into jewelry, we need to break them on this side. So these are the shells that I am going to use for these earrings. Um, we shall also need some tools. I will need a pair of pliers, the Chano's pliers, that you can identify by the fact that they are narrow <clears throat> here at the top in order to grab the small findings. And another characteristic of the Chano's pliers is the fact that they have a flat surface without teeth on the inside to prevent them from scratching the findings. Of course, the fact that they have no teeth will make them um, grab less securely the um, <clears throat> findings, but nevertheless they will protect the surface of the findings because they will scratch the surface less. So you might risk to uh, lose the findings so they might fall off the pliers but on the other hand the pliers will not scratch because they have no teeth another tool that I will use is this ring which is called the jump ring opener so these two spaces here are made for the jump rings so a jump ring will fit into this space here as you can see and it can be opened and closed with the pliers like this and closed so these are the tools that I will use and um, I will also use some findings on the one hand, hand I will use the jump ring that I have been telling you about that I am going to open and close with this jump ring opener and on the other uh, I will use these fish hook ear wires or French ear wires which are used to in order to put the uh, to hang the earrings on the ear the earrings that I will make will be uh, dangle earrings and you can wear them for example at the beach um, let's start making the earrings. First of all, I will take one of the jump rings. I'll grab it with the pliers. And with the jump ring opener, I will open the jump ring. I will take one of those shells, put the shell on the jump ring, and then I will put the fish hook ear wire. I will close the jump ring like this and I have made the first part of our earring of course if you like a shorter earring you can just leave the earring like this if you want a dangle earring then we shall do the next thing I'll take another jump ring again I'll open the jump ring I will put the second shell on this jump ring like this and I have created the first
So now I have created the first earring as you see. So I have attached the two shelves to one another so that I have created the dangle earring. Now I'll take the remaining findings and I will do the same steps. So I'll take one of the shells, I'll grab the jump ring, I'll open the jump ring, I will put the first shell and then I will also put the second shell on this jump ring. Like this and now let's close this jump ring as well, this way. And I'll take the second jump ring, I'll open it, I'll put the jump ring on the shell and now I will put the second fish hook ear wire but I will make sure that the tip of this fish hook ear wire faces the opposite direction than the other fish hook ear wire. So if this fish hook ear wire here points to the left side, the second fish hook ear wire, this one, will point to the right so that both earrings will show us the front, the colorful part. So I'll put this fish hook ear wire here and I will close the jump ring. Like this, and now our animal print earrings are both ready. With some simple tools, just two simple tools, the pliers and the jump ring opener, and a few findings, the jump rings and the fish hook ear wires. So this is what the earrings look like from a closer distance.